Hello everyone and welcome back to Making a Dark Ride. Today I'm going to look into the creation of facades, entrances and queues. Now, I'm not normally one to use these very often and more often than not I'll try not to focus a video upon them. However, sometimes they can be quite important, particularly when telling a more complicated story. Uh, an example of this will be the very recent Battle Across Time interactive queue for the upcoming part two of the world of, the Do of Doctor Who. Uh, for that, I needed to make sure that I covered a lot of topics. I needed to make sure that I showed a lot of creatures, aliens, and story elements so that people could understand what's going to be going on in the ride, since it's a subject that not everyone's particularly familiar with. In general, when I'm creating a queue, I try to do a combination of what I describe as cattle grid parts and corridors. That way you will have one room where people go backwards and forwards through what is essentially a cattle grid uh, labyrinth of um, fences and then those will be divided up into different rooms and connecting those rooms will be longer corridors. Uh, that allows guests to be a bit more interested because if you're stuck in one room for too long then you're going to get very bored but of course you need to conserve space sometimes and you don't want to have a queue which stretches out far too long. I think that's one thing that's always worth avoiding. Um, going back to the main entrance of a ride, uh, as someone commented in Shy Guys World, sometimes it's quite difficult to have a balance of uh, building size. Sometimes you do actually want to create a building which is absolutely enormous so that you can attract people to it. However, occasionally you will want a situation where you can just let a building sit back in the background. Carnivore Origins had one of the larger buildings. I think the main thing I can say about that is to make sure that you have a good straight run up to it. I always quite like the look of one. If it's, a, if it's going to be a big important building, make sure that you, everything draws your line of sight to the building and make it very, very powerful. Um, of course, the opposite applies when you want to try and create a, small, a smaller one. What you need to do is make the entrance fairly modest and you can hide the majority of the show building behind other facades. For example, if you wanted to do one with a small entrance, you could actually have shops and restaurants covering up the rest of the building so that it looks like the one you're going into is far smaller. Uh, when you've got a forested area, of course, you can put trees uh, just in front of the show building, but that's not always the case when you want to do a more urban scenario. Now, I won't lie, I often cheat a little bit when I'm doing my rides and show buildings. This is mostly because my computer isn't the best for playing World Coast Tycoon 3 and it will often crash. So what I do is I'll put the facade and the actual ride in two separate park files more often than not. I normally I try to be as realistic as possible and actually house it in a building which could theoretically uh, contain the ride. But I will more often than not film it in a different park. Um, that's one thing I think is worth noting is, although in real life these dark rides are often in a very tight space, Royal Coast Tycoon 3 isn't nearly advanced enough to be able to do that, and you have to weigh up uh, how much realism you want, um, or whether you actually just want to create a good ride. I mean, I know, although it's being a bit delayed at the moment, uh, Battle Across Time, the world of Doctor Who, that ride is very unrealistically proportioned, but I'd rather do that and uh, make a better ride than to squash it in and make a slightly worse ride that could be realistic.